How about Joe Burrow coming up with a, an incredible game? And I do feel like I've said this a couple times now where when you see him go up against a team with a bad pass rush, it almost gives you a glimpse in the future of what the Bengals might be like when they actually get their offensive line taken care of because he's incredible and it's super fun to watch. And let's just jump into it. So this first play is going to be zone coverage. Uh, that's the route concept on the top of the screen. So, you know, it could work out, but probably not. You have cover two zones. So basically everyone will have a guy that could take care of them. And also worth mentioning, this is a second down and 15, and what Tennessee is going to do is they're going to be playing very far off here. It's a very soft zone coverage. They're okay with giving up some yards underneath, and for a lot of young quarterbacks, they won't just take what the defense gives them. They try to make a risky decision, but just looking at what we see on paper, clearly, I mean, you're just looking at it right now, you're probably saying, okay, clearly he should just hit the halfback, but a lot of guys wouldn't do that. However, Burrow, he does look up, sees if something's open, he reads the coverage, says, okay, I'll check down, and they gain a good amount of yards. They set up a third down and five, and they would convert on that third down and five, and it would have been a lot more difficult had it been a third and 15, or potentially even a turnover, which can happen. That's what you like to see out of a young quarterback, someone making smart decisions, and I feel like Burrow way more often than not, is making those smart decisions that a lot of young quarterbacks really struggle with making. This next one's another one. It's going to be a cover four zone this time, but it's a bit wonky. It's not your typical zone coverage. And basically what they're doing is that while it, there are going to be three Tennessee players covering the middle of the field, they're lined up much further to the top of the screen. So it's a little bit interesting. And the route that uh, Bengals receiver is going to be running on this play is going to get into a gap in coverage, but typically this wouldn't. So that's why I think this is interesting because on a typical cover four, this wouldn't be where you'd throw, but this is sort of a modified zone coverage. And for a lot of young quarterbacks, again, these are the reads that are difficult to make. However, once this ball is snapped and everyone gets into their coverage, you notice that there is clearly an opening right here. So again, it worked out, but it's kind of an unusual coverage. Part of that being the second down and 14. Again, they're playing a bit more cautious. But if you look over at Burrow, the ball is already getting thrown. He's in the throwing motion right now. He that quickly realized it. It took me like five, six watches to figure out exactly what this coverage was. He figured it out right away, or at least he figured out a, a soft spot in the coverage, if nothing else. Maybe he didn't feel, figure out the whole coverage, but you don't need to know the whole coverage. You just need to know where a hole is. Uh, he read it, so great job by him. He's also going to just make a perfect throw, and they're not able to get the first down, but to come very close. Just a really good play by that by Joe Burrow, and he's making these good veteran-style reads. I like this one as well, where it's going to be a cover three zone this time. There is going to be a player running into a gap in coverage. And one of the things I also just want to talk about with Joe Burrow is how crazy is it that when I talk about my breakdowns, these are the plays I'm breaking down. I think this is a great thing because when Burrow was looking great, it's just like he's looking great like a typical quarterback looks great. And what I mean is, you know, Baker Mayfield, for example, he's the kind of guy who when he was in his rookie season and he was looking great, it's because he was making these incredibly risky throws that were working out. And while Burrow has some of those as well, a lot of when he looks great is just him running an offense and sort of marching down the field and getting points. But yeah, anyways, what I love about this play as well is that Tennessee is showing cover four here, but it's actually going to be cover three. And so because of this, the route that I have on the screen will get into a gap in coverage and will be open. But Burrow just reading the coverage, what you think it would be pre-snap, this route wouldn't be open. But right when this play starts, you notice that once again, there is an opening here. This one not quite as big as the last one. But also, once again, Burrow notices it immediately and is in the throwing motion. He's figuring this stuff out in an instant. And, you know, it's insane to compare anybody to Tom Brady. But this is why the Tom Brady comparisons happened in college. Because he does make those reads so quickly. So, again, not comparing him to Tom Brady. Just saying this is why those comparisons happened. The perfect throw here also helps, and they're able to get a first down. And again, it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff like that. It really is. But, you know, enough of those, him just being smart and making the right decision plays. Let's show a fun one, why don't we? This one's fun. It's going to be a cover one blitz here. So Tennessee is blitzing on this play. And they're actually going to send an extra, extra guy because someone is covering the halfback. But he's going to basically just read if the halfback is blocking, which he is. And he's going to rush the passer as well. So there's going to be a lot of pressure coming up for Joe Burrow. 
It's a third down and nine, and the route you see on the screen is the one he wants to hit, and for good reason. I mean, that's a route that absolutely can get open against this type of coverage. The defensive back thinks you're running over the middle. He cuts back to the outside, gets pretty open. This is a good route against this coverage. However, once this play starts, there's going to be immediate contact, and this is going to slow down the receiver who's running the route Burrow wants to hit. And on top of this, there is a defensive back who was blitzing, who's getting right in Burrow's face. Admittedly, for Burrow, he's actually going to do a great job at getting around this. Also, the halfback is doing a really good job picking up this blitz, so good job by both of them. But watch how Burrow is able to just sidestep, make the throw, and it's going to just be a perfect throw where he kind of just hit the back. That That's one of those, you know, it's risky. Maybe you don't love to see that, but at the same time, if it works out, it works out. And I feel like Burrow can do that consistently. And it was kind of that weird thing where, honestly, you could have even argued that, that was a, a penalty. Uh, kind of weird that it wasn't called, to be honest. But either way, Burrow was able to make an incredible throw where the back or the receiver realized it right when he saw. And just an incredible play. I'm personally more impressed with the first three I showed you, the ones where he's just like making quick reads and making accurate throws. I think those sort of matter more in an actual game. I think kind of the highlight real level plays are ones that, yeah, they're cool and they're fun. And it's nice to see that you can do that. But at the same time, that's not going to happen very often throughout the course of the game. But it's still, you know, it's fun. I do want to be fair, though. He had one bad play. He did. He threw an interception. It was called back because of a penalty that wasn't really part of the play, so that obviously helped very much, but at the same time, it's fair to criticize Joe Burrow at times. I'm not going to just pretend like he's been perfect. He hasn't. He made a bad read. Let's get into it. This is going to be a cover one hole concept, so there's a linebacker covering the middle of the field. You also have one safety deep. Then it's just going to be man-on-man coverage throughout the, the rest of the play, and for Cincinnati, they have a pretty good concept to try and get the first down here. What they're doing is there are two receivers on the bottom of the screen. The one closest to the inside, he's going to run a route that's going to try and take the linebacker away, essentially. Because you don't know if there's going to be a linebacker over there in the middle of the field. But there's a good chance there at least will be a linebacker or safety covering that area. Because when you're going up against man coverage and there's a single safety deep, basically 98% of the time, there at least will be someone covering the middle of the field or just no one will be there at all and it'll be a blitz. But either way, that would be good for Cincinnati. The way it's supposed to work is that the receiver closest to Burrow, he takes the linebacker out of the way. The other receiver gets open. Burrow is able to hit the second receiver and they get the first down. That's the way this play is supposed to work on paper. Once this play starts, you notice that A.J. Green, he's the one on the bottom in the yellow circle. That's the one that Burrow wants to hit. It's going to be tough for him to get the first down, right? This He's open. You can definitely get a completion here, but it's third down and eight. Burrow wants the first down, and if he throws it right now, it's probably going to be just in, uh, you know a catch, but you only gain five yards or so and have to punt. The flip side is that also look at the linebacker. He's going to do an incredible job on this play of not staying too far deep, which honestly is very risky, but he just realized what the play was because had he just stayed with the player deep, then at least he's taking that first guy out of the play. But since he's keeping an eye on A.J. Green, this now actually means that Burrow could throw it over the middle and get that open, but the problem with this is that the play is going to have to last a while, which who knows if it's going to hold up. It probably wouldn't have. So really good read by Tennessee's linebacker on this play. But Burrow's going to mis- make a mistake and throw this ball here, and it's going to get picked off. Again, got called back because of penalty. Burrow got lucky. Really, the reality of that situation is Burrow has to either throw that ball sooner and just hope A.J. Green makes a play or don't throw that ball at all. It was it was a poor read, but you know what? Those are the kind of poor reads I'm okay with a rookie quarterback making. It, he made a mistake. It, he was a little bit slow in reading the play, and honestly, it was more so just he's not quite aware of what the NFL caliber players are going to be able to do. I think you're going to see him make a lot more rookie mistakes like that one than him just like not being able to read defenses because he's actually pretty old for a rookie. I mean, he turns 24 in a month, so he's definitely pretty old for a rookie. But at the same time, he's just, you know, plays like that. You're just not used to how good some of these guys are and how incredible of plays some defenders can make. So I'm not going to kill him for that play. But yeah, as a whole, I thought Burrow was incredible. So many fun, great plays by him. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts of Joe Burrow? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.